G'day guys, it's Paul from Polyman Astro here uh, with a new episode today on Starnet++. We're going to be looking at three things that crop up while I'm working on images uh, and I'm going to be dealing with them from an ease of use case. Starnet++ is used to create either star masks or starless images. Most of us, I think, tend to use it to create starless images. Traditionally, creating starless images is uh, quite a labor-intensive process and takes a lot of time. Starnet++ makes that much easier. It was created using machine learning, where they gave it a training set of data. I assume it was paired up. Here's a star image or a traditional image, and here's a starless image. Eventually, it was able to determine how it could re recognize those stars and how it could remove them. And most importantly, the idea is that it can interpolate from the area around the stars uh, what would be behind those stars, and that's what makes the starless image. It has different levels of fineness I guess you could call it. The, the, the base case is 128 by 128 and what that means is it, it's cutting your image up into chunks of 128 by 128 pixels but it can work on finer scales down to I think about 16 by 16. Uh, obviously the, the finer the scale the much more processing time it's going to need to do that. So the first issue we're going to look at um, I'm going to call the unstretched case. Uh, and that's because that training set we were talking about, all the images in it were stretched images. Therefore, if you try and use an unstretched image, Starnet++ is not going to do very well with it because it wasn't part of its training set, it wasn't part of its validation set. It, it doesn't deal with it very well because it's completely different to what it's used to. So if, if you're going to be, if this, is, this is issue number one because it's the easiest to deal with. Just make sure you stretch your data. Uh, but let's have a look at what it looks like because I do on Facebook and so on see every now and then people posting, I've used Starnet++, this is what's happened and they don't understand why. So let's have a look at what can happen. I'll pop it up on the screen now. So what you can see here is an unstretched image and next to it I've applied Starnet++. And you can see two things. Number one, there's still stars, it hasn't removed the stars, and two, uh, if we zoom in a bit closer here, there's some serious issues, there's some weird artifacts within the stars, and you might also see, if I move down around the image, you might actually see these 128 by 128 blocks, they're generally showing up as darker grey or, or black boxes. Uh, are spread around the image. So at least you can see what the, what the 128 by 128 chunks look like when Starnet++ is working on it. But as you can see, because it wasn't part of the training set and the validation set, Starnet++ does not deal well at all with unstretched images. So this is the easiest one to deal with. Just stretch your image and this kind of artifact won't happen. So the second issue I'm going to call the halo effect. Um, and this is because most of us probably have ZWO or Optolong or astronomic filters, not having a dig at them. But compared to the Astronon and the Chroma filters, they do tend to produce some halos, particularly with green filters, blue filters maybe, and particularly O3 filters, which is where I tend to notice it because I do mostly narrowband. So the, the training set that Starnet++ used presumably was all based on high quality filters like your Astrodon and Chroma, so there weren't really these massive halos. So when you use Starnet++ and you do have these other filters that produce halos, you're going to see some issues. So let's, again, let's jump in and, and have a look. So you can see in this image here, the stars weren't too bright and didn't produce huge halos, uh, so they are manageable. But when we look at the Starnet++ starless image, you can see down the bottom here, there's still some red spherical kind of, well, it's 2D, uh, circular kind of objects. And they're the halos around uh, these stars. So that they weren't perfectly removed, but I could clone stamp them out. Uh, I do often, I'm an R as to whether I should clone stamp because I like to keep things authentic as, as much as possible. I don't like to manipulate my images too much in that kind of way and risk changing too much. But you could deal with these kind of halos nice and easily with a clone stamp or a, uh, if you're in Photoshop, a um, smart removal of that kind of object. 
Um, so they're not too bad to deal with. But in this image, there is a particularly bright star and the halo was huge. Uh, and you can see that there is a, a rather large halo here and the more I stretch this starless image, uh, the worse that halo is going to get, just as if it was a, a normal image as well. But Starnet++ has not removed that halo at all, has, just doesn't know how to deal with it. So this is an issue. Um, I've put this issue second because if the stars aren't too bright, like I said, it, 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 it's somewhat manageable and you could do some sort of removal process to hide those halos, but sometimes the halos are going to be so big that you just can't do that. It is an issue that could be solved potentially expensively by buying some new filters. Issue number three, I am going to call the crazy artifact case. And that's, this is something that I haven't solved yet. Uh, I don't see it in every image. It only crops up every now and then. Uh, it tends to be when there's particularly complicated nebulosity in the background. And I think it's just a case of, it's not so much the star removal. The star removal was fine. This is an issue with the interpolation, putting that background back in. Uh, and sometimes Starnet++ does a terrible job of it. So you can see here, this image of the Tarantula Nebula is exactly a case of this. And uh, you'll be able to see both things that I tend to see in, in, in this kind of issue. The first is these, these straight lines. And I think they're tending to happen around the border of these 128 by 128 uh, boxes. There was a star right on the corners there perhaps, or, or right along one of the edges. And because there was quite complicated nebulosity, Starnet++ just hasn't dealt with that as well as it should have. But you also see here in this bit, uh, that there's some sort of weird cross hatching. It almost looks like a little bay matrix from a from a camera or something. It's it's, it's these little almost looks like little pixels. And I don't know what's going on here. Again, it's an interpolation problem. And this issue I don't know how to deal with, other than to not use Starnet plus plus and go back to using traditional starless techniques, star removal techniques. Uh, if you've got a way of dealing with this, if you've seen it and you know how to deal with it, please let me know in the comments. I'd I'd love to know how to deal with it because I, 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 as I said, I've, effectively I can't deal with it at the moment and I have to go back to, to traditional methods. All right, so that's it for today. It was just a short one on Starnet++ um, and some of the issues that I've been having. Uh, again, if, if you know how to deal with that last one, please let me know in the comments. And also, if, if you aren't currently a subscriber, please do consider subscribing by hitting the like button and follow me on Instagram and Facebook using the handle at PolymanAbstract. Thanks for watching.